Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. In this video I'd like to highlight the changes that I made to version 11 of my geometry node assets. And I guess it makes sense to start with the biggest overall change, which is that if you use version 11, you'll need to be running Blender version 4.1 or later. Um, as of recording this, that released yesterday. Then, getting into some specific new changes, there's a new set of fence modifiers. Um, those can be added to a curve in any combination and will let you make hundreds of different variations of fences. So you can make one that was like this, or like this, or even one like this. To use the fence modifiers in your scene, you simply have to add a curve, add a fence base modifier to that curve, and then you can start stacking the other fence modifiers. So all of the fence modifiers randomly select which meshes they will instance from a collection, and by changing the meshes that are in that collection, you have full control over the look and style and the amount of variety that you get in your fence. Then there's another new modifier, Array Radial, and it's for copying things in a circle or an arc or anything in between. Or you can put it into deform mode and it can bend your mesh into arcs or circles and stuff like that. All of the other array modifiers got improved UV offsetting. Previously, the entire UV layout would be offset together. Now each UV island is offset individually, which means that when you have an array and you want your texture to continue seamlessly across the array, it should be better able to do that um, with more UV layouts. All of the build modifiers that would benefit from it got a tag feature. This feature allows the modifiers to limit where they perform their function to only be on the part of the mesh that has a specific tag. This feature is controlled by changing the tag as and build on properties in the modifier panel on the modifiers that have them. For example, here I have a face project and its tag as property is set to tag the result as face project and it's appending that result to the input mesh and the input mesh is tagged by default as the base mesh. And then here in the next modifier on instance on faces, we can select whether we want to instance on everything, which doesn't consider the tag at all, or if we want to instance on what's tagged as base mesh, or we can instance on what's tagged as face project, which we set in the modifier above this. There are also custom tags, and you can use those if you need to distinguish between more than one modifier of the same type on an object. The merge by distance and auto smooth features of the build walls modifier were both exposed as properties, and sharp edges that you have in your guide wall and also in your wall template will be combined and transferred to the final wall mesh now. This means you can turn the auto smoothing option off and instead go in edit mode and choose where you want the sharp edges by marking edges as sharp. Another new feature on build walls is continuous UVs. Continuous UVs is a new feature that should remove the repetitive seams that you used to get, especially if you beveled a corner when you're using the build walls modifier. With continuous enabled, the UVs should instead continue continuously all the way around the walls without any seams. Do note, however, that your UV layout does still need to align to either the U or the V axis. It can't be randomly rotated. With the loose edges to curves option, build walls will convert any loose edges that you add to your wall templates into curves that will run along your wall. Those curves can be used by another new modifier, build wall elements, to array all sorts of things along your wall, from posts and pillars to decorations or lamps or anything else you can think of. The hole cutting options were removed from the build walls modifier in favor of a more modular approach. Instead, you will now add a build cut holes modifier in addition to your build walls modifier. The build cut holes modifier has also been simplified. It no longer requires a vertex group to identify what part of the mesh to use for cutting. Instead, it uses the material to do that. And the modifier can cut using either geometry from a collection or tagged geometry that's already joined into the object that has the build cut holes modifier on it. Build Chimney is a new modifier that provides a quick way to add some medium level detail to your roofs. You can edit the height and profile of your chimney using some simple faces, and then the modifier will take care of extruding that down either to a roof or to the ground, as well as creating the UVs and adding some details. The Face Project modifier got a new mode. It can now either project its faces onto another object, or it can project a copy of the faces of another object onto itself. A few of the modifiers were merged together. 
Curve to lines along and curve to lines across became a new modifier that's just curve to lines. That modifier has options to control which sides of the curve the lines appear on and what direction they should extend in, providing all of the functionality of the previous two nodes as well as additional options. Smooth face average and smooth keep edges were merged into a new modifier that's just called smooth. The new modifier has options to keep the boundary edges as well as your choice of the method that is used to apply the smoothing since we now have the blur attribute node. In other quality of life improvements, any modifier that might produce an empty output, for example the build walls modifier before you assign a wall template to it used to output nothing, now it will output a warning message instead. This makes it possible to find and select your object even if its modifiers aren't producing a result since they don't vanish from the scene entirely. I also added a new setups category to the asset library. Setups give you a quick way to drag a whole stack of modifiers with all of the relevant collections and attributes that they might require into your scene at once. There are three of those so far. The fence setup adds a simple picket fence. It's a curve with a stack of fence modifiers, a ground collection to snap that fence to, and then placeholder collections that you can replace with your own fence parts. The roof setup adds a mesh with a stack of build roof modifiers. Those modifiers add some shingle and beam details, and then the base mesh has the height and direction vertex groups already set up. It also adds placeholder gable wall template and shingle meshes that you can replace with your own. And then the walls and windows setup contains a wall object with a stack of modifiers for making a wall. It first snaps some faces onto the wall guide for instancing, then it instances windows from a placeholder collection on those faces. It builds walls on the wall guide using the included wall template object, and then it cuts holes in that wall using the windows that it instanced previously. Those are the new setups. One thing to note about them, because of how Blender appends collections, when you drag them into the scene they will actually be a plain object, and then the plain object will import all of the collections it needs from the original file. The plane is just a placeholder to reference that collection, and once it's imported you can delete the plane. And then just to wrap up, there are some more auxiliary changes. In Blender 4.1, they added panels to the modifier UIs as well as drop-down menus, so all of my modifiers have been updated to use those features. Um, there shouldn't be any more integer parameters where 0 equals x or any of that nonsense. All of the UV name properties on my modifiers should now have a default value of UV map, the same as the Blender default. I updated a bunch of the default property values on the modifiers to better match um, what I thought would be common uses of the modifiers. All of the 550 plus properties across all of my different modifiers should now have a tooltip description, which you can see by hovering your mouse over the property. Those descriptions should tell you a little bit about what the property is for or how it works. And all of those descriptions have also been exported to the documentation on my website. I also added my DJH Utils add-on to the downloadable files when you purchase Geonode assets. It's just a random collection of operators for Blender and I decided to include it because one of them is specifically for creating the placeholder material slots that the instance on faces modifier uses to choose which instance it should spawn on which face. And that's about it for this update. Um, I recently set up a Discord server. If you would like to join that, you're welcome to. There's links for that in the description. Um, if you would like to purchase my Geometry Node assets, you can do that either on Blender Market or on Gumroad. There's links to both of those in the description as well. And otherwise, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.